So we have a 29 year old man who comes to the accident and emergency department complaining of progressive weakness of the both legs that has been getting progressively worse over the last two weeks. Weakness appeared to be symmetrical and is now struggling to walk. He also complained of pain in his lower back and buttocks. He noted that left side of the face has become weak and is evident by his speech also, as the left mouth doesn't open properly and his speech becomes slurred. On further questioning, he has recently recovered from a flu-like illness. He admits admit intermittent use of intravenous heroin. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient problem? Well, the answer to this question is HIV. Why is this the answer? Well, first of all, this patient is the risk of contacting HIV. Why? IV drug abuse, well known. Well, I have a question for you. Write down the answer. This IV drug abuser can have a cardiac problem also. Which cardiac problem can occur? Write down the answer in your copy. Yes, it is infective endocarditis. It is an easy question. But I have got two more questions. Now, in this patient of the IV drug abuse, which valve is most commonly involved and which the most common organism causing endocarditis? Write down the answer in your copy. Well, the answer of this is tricuspid. And answer this is staph aureus. So we got some additional questions. Now in this question, patient is likely to have HIV and there may be seroconversion and that can lead to GBS, GB syndrome. It is a post-infectious disorder. Like in this case also, it was perhaps HIV which induced this problem. Well, the body mounts a misdirected immune response against the nervous system due to molecular mimicry. And this molecular mimicry occurs primarily against, against the myelin sheet. So what we can say, it's a type of demyelinating disorder. Okay. Well, one more question for you. Write down the answer. I just told you that GBS is a demyelinating disorder. We also know that we have multiple sclerosis, which is again a demyelinating disorder. Now the question is to write down the answer. What is the site of involvement of these two diseases? Okay. Well, as far as multiple MS, it's a disease of central nervous system. And as far as GBS, it's a disease of peripheral nervous system. That means they both have the same pathology. There's a demyelinating disorder, but the site is different. It is CNS disease, it's a PNS disease. It has a very important thing to discuss during uh, the clinical feature also. So we move further. Now, as far as we talk about the classical GBS concern, I told you is a mainly peripheral nervous system. It is an acute onset, like in this case also. Patient has a short history of two weeks only, ascending progressive neuropathy, and it is correct. It and the feature of this uh, of neuropathy are flaccid limb weakness. That we in a type of lower motor neuron palsy. Paresthesia and hyporeflexia. Reflexes are diminished. It's a mainly motor features. Sensory are minimal. Well, mus in severe cases, the muscle may involve the, the respiratory muscles also, muscle weakness, as it's a rising, rising, rising from the legs, come to the thigh, and maybe abdomen to the chest also, diaphragm get paralyzed. 
so that can lead to a type of respiratory failure. And that's the major cause of mortality. That's why whenever we are getting a case of GBS, it should be always managed in intensive care unit where we have facility for ventilation. Ventilator should be there where we are managing GBS. Autonomic involvement, uh, autonomic nervous system involvement can also be there which can lead to cardiac arrhythmias. That is the other reason why the patient should be managed in ICU. Two of the patient with a history of GI or respiratory tech infection one to four weeks before the onset of weakness. Well, it could be GI where patient may have diarrhea. Or there may be upper respiratory tech infection. Sore throat can be there. Now, what are the common organisms which can? The common are Campylometer jejuni, CMV, aptin bar virus, influenza A, mycoplasma pneumonia, HIV like in our case, or it could be hemophilus influenzae also. Now, out of all these, which is the most common organism which can cause to GBA? Write down the answer. Answer is Campylobacter jejuni. Invariably in the exam, they talk about Campylobacter jejuni. Of course, very rarely, uncommonly, they can talk about other thing is which, which is again usually HIV. Like in this question also, we talked about HIV. Now, let's look into other options. Yersinia. It is associated with diarrhea, so-called yersiniosis, Crohn's disease or reactive arthritis. It is not associated with neurological feature or it is usually not associated with GBS-like picture. Streptococcal pneumonia is other option. It can lead to pneumonia, sinusitis, meningitis. Again, it is not a cause of paralytic neuropathy. Well, step pneumonia is the most common cause of community-acquired pneumonias. Okay. Well, it can lead to a type of lobar pneumonia. Now, I have one question for you. What is the color of the sputum in this case of pneumonia due to streptococcal? So write down the answer. The question is about color of sputum. What type of color is it? it? Well, the answer is a rust color sputum. Okay. Other option is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Well, TB can have, in fact, tuberculosis can spread to any organ in the body. As far as seen as concerned, it can have intracranial abscess. It may have granuloma. It can have arachnoiditis, can have meningitis, TB meningitis. Again, I have a question for you. Write down the answer. In, you get one case of meningitis. Well, we know in meningitis, fever, headache, neck rigidity are the features. Patient has come to you and you are, you suspect this could be a case of TBM or a bacterial meningitis. So by history only, by history only, how can you come to know whether it's bacterial meningitis or TBM? And remember, one of the most common answer given is patient already having TB. It's the most common answer. No. Patient has no history of tuberculosis. Remember, TBM can occur directly also without uh, any clinical feature of respiratory tract involvement or any other feature. So now patient has no history of tuberculosis, but TBM is suspecting. Now again, we just by history only, how can you think about? Write down the answer. Answer is TBM, it is never acute. It will never be have a history of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 days. No, it's a long history of weeks or months. In contrast, bacterial meningitis, they have a short history, days, maybe a week or so, 10 days. But in, in TBM, it may be many weeks, maybe months also. And TBM usually doesn't present as a toxic case. That's the main difference. Well, this patient might be considered at the risk of contacting tuberculosis. Why? He is a HIV patient. In HIV patient, tuberculosis is very common. 
Well, the syndrome was confined to legs. One might consider pot disease of the spine or arachnoiditis as a cause. Okay, TB is not a common cause of acute paralytic neuropathy. The way patient has been described, if it was due to pot spine, then there would have been upper motor neuron features in the legs. But in the patient, we have a flaccid paralysis. So this is not the answer. Shigella. It causes dysentery, hemolytic urine syndrome. It is not associated with acute paralytic neuropathy. Golden line to remember, GBS is a demyelinating post-infectious autoimmune disorder causing ascending A-reflexes, flaccid paralysis. It's the most commonly due to campylobiter jejuni. Well, I hope you liked the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine. There are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than thousand questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB medicine and family medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.